did a trip when I go to Home Depot. They never seem to have their acting gear ever. Um, ordered a bunch of stuff um, last night, and I was in there. Actually, it was yesterday afternoon, and um, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll be ready in the morning. So luckily I called first. They weren't ready. So I went ahead and got some of my other lumber and everything set up and ready to go for today. And then went ahead and drove in an after hour of my pickup time, and they were still trying to get stuff ready. And then watching them try to load it was pretty hilarious. So I hope to be able to get at least the dining room framed up today. Um, because of this setback, it's already almost 11 o'clock. So by the time I actually get rolling and get everything set up in the house, it'll be noon. Kind of getting things moving along here. So Barry went ahead and cut about half the stack of those. Those are actually made for nine foot walls. We gotta do eight six. So I'm cutting them down. I paid a little extra for the uh, 104 and 5 8 inch ones. Um, just so I can have a little bit less waste. And these are my insulated headers. So they're all ready to go. So oh, I got a previous video where I talked about how I built these, but basically I just sandwiched a half inch. Uh, this is XPS foam in between them. And then I ran these through the planer to get any high spots and things down. I learned my mistake on that last time because uh, my headers, when I first did them, the first five or six, I built them, put them up, and I realized later that they had you know warped this way, the, the wood. It was probably warped that way when I built them, and so they were wider than they were supposed to be. Um, I didn't even have a planer at that time, so I went and bought a planer, and then, boy, that really changed things. So, run through the planer, make sure they're good and flat. Um, I actually knock off a 32nd of an inch also, and then out of three boards, that's, you know, hardly anything at all. A little less than an eighth of an inch, so it works out really good. Okay, I'm going to get started on this wall here real quick. I want to show you how I do it anyways. There's a lot of people do it different ways. I like to detail out every wall um, where every stud's going to be. That I can lay it out the way when I'm drawing it. I know exactly where every anchor bolt's going to be, uh, exactly where every stud's going to be. Um, so I don't run any surprises when I start framing. So I've already laid out my uh, base plate and my top plate. In the base plate, I've already drilled the holes and then confirmed that they will uh, fit. So I laid that base plate on top of the bolt and everything looks good. And this is what I do when I detail out my drawings or my walls. So on this one, I started from the right side. This is datum dimensioning. So when I pull my tape measure down from the right, I'll go nine inches, then two one, then three three, then four nine. Um, I'll just go on down the tape measure and mark everything. Makes it really easy. And then on some of the larger walls, I know that my, uh, my base plate is gonna be 16 feet. So when I hit 16 feet, I'll start the datum dimensioning over again because I know that that's gonna be a separate, uh, separate piece. One thing you may notice too is that first dimension is nine inches. Get the paper going here. It is nine inches off the end of the wall instead of 16. The reason being is I want to make sure that all of my trusses land right on top of my studs. So the beginning of that, that run of trusses starts at the south end of the house. So way down at the south end is where the first truss is. And every 16 inches it hits, you know, have to hit on top of the stud. So of course, when I get to this corner, I was not going to land up exactly at 16 inches. That's why that first one's only going to be uh, nine inches off the end of the, the wall. But that ensures that every single one of my studs is going to line up right underneath a truss. So the weight goes from the roof structure directly down to the foundation. And um, I did this on the house too. If you go back to some previous videos, you'll see where I made sure that only all the way up to the top. So I'm up 40 some feet goes, um, 
everything lines up on top of itself from the very top of the roof all the way down to the, the very uh, uh, base plate. This window, because it's so big, we wanted to get as high as we possibly could to catch sunsets and things since the dining room is pushing out from the kitchen. From the kitchen, we had great views, but now we're added 12 feet onto it, so we're trying to get as much light in there as possible. So I had to raise that window as high as I possibly could and I actually raised it to the bottom of the second top plate, which means that I had to actually cut out the first top plate where that header goes. So now I gotta get that header and bring it over in here and then I can take the uh, uh, new top plate and put it over the top of the header to span a distance this way it'll have some strength when I go to lift it up. All right, first wall is done, everything went okay. I'm gonna go ahead and build one of the side walls. Um, and that's probably as far as I'm gonna get today. I got that meeting to go to in about an hour. So I should be able to get that side wall built and then I'll just lay it down and tomorrow I can start raising them up. All right, so I got this uh, other wall built last night. Or no, I built it this morning. So this is the exact opposite of the wall on the other side. So it's pretty easy. All I had to do was just lay it out, lay the boards uh, along the bottom, and then mark the same stud locations. And then I just put my uh, sill sealer on. So of course I don't need anything here because that's going to get cut out. Um, so I just ran up to where the door is going to be opening at. And got my sill sealer on the bottom of that one and then of course I'll go through like I did on the main house and put that uh, liquid flashing along the outside edge once I get everything up on there but uh, now the fun task of trying to get these walls up all right I think I'm ready to go here I got my strap on got a board on each side to brace it when I get it up um, I'm always a little nervous raising a wall especially by yourself I did a lot you know when we did the house but I was doing so much I just got used to doing it and did a few things I probably shouldn't have done. There's a video where I dropped the wall a few times. Uh, so we'll see how well this goes. My plan is to use the crane on the skid steer. My septic tanks are right here. So I'm gonna come around to this side and hopefully get a good enough angle on it where I can pick it up and drop it in place. The uh, chain on there swivels, so it should work out pretty good. Well, we got all the walls up now. The only issue is attaching them to the house. Because you can see where those uh, pink dots are. Those are where my studs are. 
So clearly there's no stud to attach the wall directly to. So my plan is I'm gonna run a two by four along the top of the wall, nail it into all the studs and then attach the wall to that. Cause I'll need to have a nailer here anyways for drywall. And then when I build the uh, trusses along this side, I'll just have to take that into, into account that there's a inch and a half less on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna videotape this only because I could really screw something up. So I have to have two points between the opening so the wall doesn't twist. So I got my anchor bolt and then I put a tap con right there. I did the same thing on the other side. Uh, we did not put an anchor bolt on this side uh, because they didn't exactly know where to put it at and I didn't feel like explaining it. I figured I'd put it in tap cons later. But all those, um, oh, what do you call them? Whatever those lines are, <laughs> run through here. And so one should be six in the rating heat. One should be six inches and that should be 12 inches off that. But I know these were turning right here. And so they bowed quite a bit. So I'm really hoping I don't hit anything. I'm thinking that if I go tight to that corner and then tight to this corner, I should definitely miss everything. But if I hit it, I will know because it's got 60 pounds of pressure in it and it will blow all the dust right up into my face. I did go ahead and set my depth gauge from when I did the other side. Basically putting that on the ground, putting that right there. So I've got not much room, eighth of an inch or so for a fill for the dust that falls in the bottom. I'm not worried about this side, I'm worried about this side. So I should have a line right here and I should have a line somewhere about right here. If like I said, I remember the line bowing around. So further over, I may even try to get in this far bay. But this side shouldn't be an issue. Depth-wise, I shouldn't be deep enough to hit anything. But, you never know. So, uh, I'm gonna go right there. And I go further on the outside too because it should wrap six inch on the inside. So if I go over here on the outside, it should be even safer. All right, nothing blew up. Yeah, now I can sleep better. It never hurts to double check your work. Um, I was getting ready to drill the holes in the base plate for the wall the fireplace is going in. And um, I had to stop myself and think, I know that our forms, you know, pushed out here and there. So I wanted to make sure that everything was right. And I'm glad I did. Because when I measured it, 18 foot landed up on the corner the way it should have. But as it went down, you can see my chalk line here. You can see how it's bowed out about an inch down to there. So it got right about to here good and then it bowed out. So I'm glad I checked that, otherwise I would have drilled all my holes and then this wall would have been crooked. That was a fun wall to get up. Uh, there's no way for me to get the skid steer in here to help pick it up. So I just had to uh, muscle it up by hand, but went up okay. Got everything uh, braced and ready to go for the next wall. So I have a little, I don't know, about 18 inch wall that goes right here. 
I'll get in later. So I've got to have enough room to bring in the storm shelter. I don't know if I'm going to do it from that side or from this side. Um, if I can pick it up with the crane, coming from that side makes more sense because it sits right here. And I think the crane will get it out really close to where it needs to be. But I haven't measured that off yet to see how exactly it'll work. So I'll go ahead and get this uh, end wall up and I can tie these two together. And, um, and I'll see where I'm at. I may go ahead and put a couple uh, pieces of sheeting on, or sheathing, uh, just on the corners to stiffen those up a bit. I'm not sure yet. But right here, this is where the uh, fireplace is going to go. And then, like I said, I haven't framed anything in yet until I get it, so I know exactly what to frame and where. And then there'll be a little uh, stem wall coming out here, place to store firewood on this side, place to store firewood on that side. There'll be a door here going into the sunroom, a door there going into the uh, downstairs living area, and then out here is just going to be outdoor seating. So I'll be able to sit out here and watch the fireplace because it's double sided. Check out the stars, all that good stuff should be pretty cool. You may notice the direction the sun's changed because I've spent the last at least an hour, hour and a half kicking myself because I built this wall backwards. So I time last me putting this wall up. And you may have noticed it in me taking my time looking at something and trying to scratch my head. And my sheet told me this was supposed to be six feet, six and a half inches. And I kept wondering why this last bay wasn't lining up right. I looked at it and looked at it and thought, well, I got to be right. So I went ahead and just built the wall. Um, I was five inches short. So my top plate, my bottom plate was cut five inches short. That's why that last piece, the dimension wasn't working. The reason why I um, went ahead and just built the wall anyways and didn't check it was because in AutoCAD, my dimensions, um, I don't know if it was working in Auto, AutoCAD, but It'll create a temporary dimension uh, setting um, based on your, your viewport. Anyways, I'm not trying to get too nerdy. But it will throw off uh, the scale that your dimensioning is at. And on this wall, that was messed up. Um, so I had basically copied the properties from another dimension, and that works great until you move something and then it sets it back. So I was being lazy. I didn't actually redo the dimensions. I just pasted them basically and I thought it was I thought it was off because of that well it turns out it was I just cut the board wrong so I reassembled everything I added on a five inch piece here tap conned it in put a piece on top did the same thing up there added this piece nailed it all together good to go and then I stand back and I'm like why does this not look right because I should have had enough room here for a bench but I didn't I only had like 16 inches um, by the time I put a bench in there, that means the bench would be in the trim of the door. I built the stupid wall backwards. When I did my dimensioning, it was based off me being inside the room looking out, and then my dimensions ran across. So I did it on the outside of the room facing in and dimensioned it across and built it backwards. So then I ended up and basically cut out the whole doorway. Uh, this stud that's, or this stud that's here was right there. So I cut everything out, slid it down, moved that stud down to that end. It's about an inch or so off from where I originally wanted it to be. So I got it fixed, but it was an aggravating process. I didn't feel like filming it. So last wall, potentially for today is this one. It'll be really quick and easy getting this one up. I wanted to get this back wall up and then look at getting the storm shelter in and then building this wall. Um, I don't know if I get to that one today or not. Um, we'll see how I feel after putting this one up. If I screw this one up, then I'm done.
These dogs were absolutely no help today. No help at all. It was hot. They couldn't even wag their tails. Right, Bailey? You weren't even wagging to cool me off, were you? How about you, Asher? How about your tail? Yeah? How about you, Odie? Yeah, your tail's going too. <laughs> I stacked up all the wood over on this side is because it's going to get hot. I'm not going to be able to work on this for a couple days. And uh, that wood's going to warp. There's already a couple pieces that are warping. Um, but pretty good progress for one day. So the dining room is all done. It's be a patio door here. This window is the same size as the windows upstairs. It's just turned on its side. So it's a 5 by 8 And then a, another patio door here. This will be the sunroom area or screened-in porch because we have killer mosquitoes out here. It'll be the uh, fire relaxing area, I guess. This will be the living room. So I'll get this wall up when I get back. I don't know if I'm going to move the um, storm shelter now or not, but it goes right here. And then we'll box box it around. It should The wall should start about right where that tape line is. Come out and over. And then there'll be a sliding barn door just like we have in the laundry room. This door will transition over to about here. The dining room window that's coming gonna come out is gonna go about right here. Um, the laundry room window, which is an awning, is gonna go here. And then I ordered a picture window, an awning with a pitch window is gonna go where this window was at in the laundry room, and the new awning is gonna go over here. So both these windows are operational. We didn't see a need to have a um, opening window in the laundry room because you have to reach over. The washer and dryer to get to it we found that that's not very easy so we don't even use it so a pitch window there's fine it just goes into the uh, screen in porch and then this will be where the fireplace goes so this will be a wood burning uh, ducted fireplace which means i can duct it into um, the house so the heat won't just heat this room um, I'll have intakes on the bottom left it'll blow around the fireplace up out the top right and then I'll get it up into the attic space and then down through the trusses and then into the house that way. And there'll be a return error down here or something. I don't quite figure out how I'm going to do that yet. And then we plan on having like a bookshelf and a bookshelf, a hearth, fireplace, mantle. We'll probably go ahead and put a TV above the fireplace there. And that should be it. So be gone for a couple days we'll come back get cracking on the other side get storm shelter moved over and then start building trusses